Welcome to this QuickBooks Online tutorial for beginners 2019 on how to enter transactions directly in your check register. My name is Matt Holquist with the QuickBooks University and we have QuickBooks Online uh, up here on the desktop. Okay, so what we're going to do here is, you know, sometimes you can't connect a bank or you can't set up the bank feeds. Some people don't want to set up the bank feeds and so you need to know uh, how to enter transactions directly in the register. I'm going to show you a couple of best practices how to do that. Okay, so what I mean by the register is, uh, in this case, the check register. And if you think back, if you're not familiar with what a check register is, uh, if you're uh, old enough to remember people that have checkbooks and write checks, a lot of people don't have checks these days, but uh, a checkbook, you would write a check and then there was a paper check register and you would write in the check register, the check number, who it was to, the date and the amount. And then you would keep a running total of how much was in your checking account. Okay, now it's kind of the same concept except electronically in QuickBooks. Okay, so what we're gonna do, you're gonna go up to the gear icon here and you're gonna go to a uh, chart of accounts. And there's multiple ways to enter this. Uh, I'm just showing you one way. Okay, so if we go to the checking account here, you'll see here and view register. Okay, so register basics, you know, if you're just using QuickBooks for the first time, you'll see what's a register. It's where you see every transaction included in an account. Okay, so there's a register for every account that you have in QuickBooks. Okay. So you'll see here, here's all the transactions. And if we if we want to add a transaction, uh, let's say that you hand wrote a check. Somebody came in and they, they ha you hand wrote a check and you had to give them that check right away. You didn't print it from QuickBooks, whatever the case may be. You can add a check. If you click this uh, drop down, you'll see you can add a check, deposit, sales receipt, receive payment, all sorts of different things here. We're gonna say check, okay? So the date, you're gonna put in the date of the check, the check number, it's gonna to default to the next one. Okay, it's a little out of order here, but uh, one that was probably printed from this sample file was 70. Let's say that this was actually 5427. Okay, then you're gonna put in the payee. Uh, let's say it was Bob's Burger Joint. Let's say that they came and delivered some catering. We had to hand write them a quick check and uh, uh, let's say staff meeting, but let's say we had to write them this quick check and uh, so we hand wrote it. We're gonna say 5423. Okay, so we put it in the payment column. You're gonna leave this blank because this is for a cleared check. Okay, type of transaction here is a check. And then over here, we have to assign the account. Okay, so we're gonna say, uh, normally I would put this under a staff meetings expense, but we'll say meals and entertainment, and then we're going to save. Okay, so that's easy as that, but you want to make sure you put in all that information. Now, the next type of transaction could be a debit card transaction. Okay, so let's say that you go, you know, you buy some office supplies and you swipe your, your debit card, not a credit card, but a, swip, uh, a debit card. And a lot of people have the question, how do I input that debit card transaction? Okay, so in this case, again, if you have the bank feed set up, it makes it so much easier just to enter these. Uh, but uh, sometimes for whatever reason, uh, it could be a, you know, a bank that uses one of those little uh, token keys that uh, doesn't connect very well, uh, or it just could be a bank that's not supported and you wanna enter these items into your register. Okay, so in this case, uh, people put in, you don't want to put in a check number because it's a debit card transaction. There's no check number and there's no check that's going to clear. Now, uh, people will put in various things. I personally put in EFT for every electronic type transaction. So it could be a, a monthly ACH that goes to pay a bill. It could be a debit card transaction. doesn't really matter. I put in EFT. Some people put in debit. Uh, for debit card transactions, or they might put ACH for an ACH transaction. Uh, just to keep it simple, I put in EFT, and EFT stands for Electronic Funds Transfer. Okay, so again, you're going to put in EFT because you want to signify that it's not an actual check. And let's say that it was Chin's Gas and Oil, uh, and it automatically puts in maintenance and repairs. Okay, memo, uh, let's see, payment, we'll say 
we'll say that this was $52 for some gas. And we're going to say, instead of maintenance and repairs, uh, let's see if we have some automobile expenses. Here we go. Fuel. Okay. Save. And there you go. All right, so those are the basics of how to use a register. Again, you can hit this drop down and you can do all sorts of different things. Uh, you could just do expense uh, for the debit card transactions instead of check. Quite honestly, it's not a big deal which one you use uh, because it's going to record the same information. But any questions whatsoever, feel free to leave a question, comment below. Uh, also, head over to the QuickBooks University. You know, the, the membership over there is growing dramatically. And it's, um, I think it's a testament to not only how good the training is, but also because you get personal support. And we've got a fantastic private Facebook group where um, answering questions, people are asking questions, very active. Same with the forum, as well as uh, people sending me emails and, and I'm answering their questions as well. Head on over there now, qbuniversity.org.